This video is inspired by the book Worlds Beyond the Poles – Physical Continuity of the Universe. This book was published in 1959. These days the book sells on eBay for around $500. I was blown away by this book. If you research stuff like Flat Earth or Hollow Earth, you have to read this book. Let me read the first page of the book which is very telling. The following pages contain the first and only description of the realistic universe of land, water, oxygen and vegetation where human and other forms of animal life abound. This is not a work of fiction. Nor is it a technical analysis of anything. It is a simple recital of fact which transcends the most elaborate fiction ever conceived. It is diametrically opposed to the assumptions and mathematical conclusions of theorists and technicians throughout the ages. It is truth. These pages describe the physical land routes from the Earth to every land area of the universe about us, which is all land. Such routes extend from beyond the North Pole and South Pole so-called ends of the Earth as decreed by theory. It will here be shown that there are no northern or southern limits to the Earth. It will thereby be shown where movement straight ahead from the pole points and on the same level as the Earth permits of movement into celestial land areas appearing up or out from the Earth. A basic version of this book was written and has been expounded at American universities between 1927 and 1930. Since then, the US Naval Research Bureau and the US Navy have conclusively confirmed the work's principal features. Since December of 1928, US Navy polar expeditions have determined the existence of land extent beyond both pole points. Out of bounds of the assumed isolated globe, Earth has postulated by the Copernican theory. On January 13 of 1956, as this book was being prepared, a US naval air unit penetrated the extent of 2300 miles beyond the assumed South Pole end of the Earth. That flight was always over land and water and ice. For very substantial reasons, the memorable flight received negligible press notice. The United States and more than 30 other nations prepared unprecedented polar expeditions for 1957 and 1958 to penetrate land now proved to extend without limit beyond both pole points. This work provides the first account of why it is unnecessary to attempt shooting up or out from the terrestrial level for journey to any of the astronomically named celestial land areas. It relates why such attempt would be futile. These pages present evidence that the same atmospheric density of this Earth prevails throughout the entire universe. Such a feature proves that except for the presence of a gaseous sky envelope and underlying oxygen content equivalent to that of the Earth, we could never observe the luminous celestial areas designated as a star or planet. The observed luminous areas of the universe about us represent celestial sky areas and they are as continuous and connected as all areas of this Earth's continuous and connected sky. Hence, it is shown that there are no globular or isolated bodies to be found throughout the entire universe. They are elements of lens deception. This work is radically and rightfully opposed to astronomical conclusions of all ages. It depicts the illusion developing from all telescopic observations and photographs. It clearly explains and vividly illustrates why those lens developed illusions have been mistakenly accepted as facts. This work projects man's first understanding of the factual and endless universe which contains human life throughout its vast length and width, regardless of all abstract theory to the contrary. This book claims to be non-fiction based on facts. Endless land with human life beyond poles? 
no one is talking about this book on YouTube. I only found two good videos so far, one from Chippy the Chipmunk and another great video from Flat Drop. I will link these videos in the description. Here are some other interesting parts I took out of the book. February of 1947 I'd like to see that land beyond the pole. That area beyond the pole is the center of the great unknown. Admiral Richard Byrd before his 7 hour flight over land beyond the North Pole. November of 1955 This is the most important expedition in the history of the world. Admiral Richard Byrd before departing to explore land beyond the South Pole. January of 1956 13 members of the United States expedition accomplished a flight of 2700 miles from the base at McMurdo Station, which is 400 miles west of the South Pole, and penetrated a land extent of 2300 miles beyond the Pole. Most of you probably know about the interview Admiral Byrd gave on the television. Here is a small part of it. Our guest tonight found out whether there was any land north of the North American continent. He made that first discovery flight, and I must say that Admiral Byrd, our guest tonight, is not only our greatest living explorer, but he's been an inspiration to countless Americans. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole, because it's getting crowded up there now, because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that, unexplored. There is no physical end to the Earth's northern and southern extent. There is no space between areas of the universe, but there must deceptively appear to be space in all observations. That apparent space results from the illusory globularity and isolation of the celestial sky areas. The concept that the universe is made out of globular and isolated bodies originated from the curvature that is created by all lenses. The bodies are an illusion. The ancient conclusion of Galileo that luminous celestial areas are isolated from each other and are circling in space was founded on the inescapable errors of lens functioning. The circling movement is an illusion. In an endless land and sky universe the undulating or billowing of luminous sky gas must deceptively appear as a circling or ellipsing movement. The deceptive appearance develops from the fact that such gaseous sky movement is detected by a circular lens. Under the mobile sky gas, which extends throughout the celestial realm, there is undetectable but very factual land, water, vegetation and life like on this earth or realm. Optical illusions result from the function of the human eye lens, and all photographic and telescopic lenses are patterned after the optic lens. Lens function demands lens convergence, which causes the deceptive curvature created by the lens into a disc-like proportion reflecting the roundness of all lenses. Every area of the Earth's continuous and unbroken outer sky surface would express the identical deceptions when observed and photographed from high altitude and from celestial land areas. In 1927 science was without knowledge that any terrestrial sky area would be luminous when observed from beyond the sky. The first observation and photograph was archived by Professor August Picard in 1931. I made a video about him recently. Picard had not achieved sufficient altitude for a completely dark stratosphere background, which would probably express outer sky luminosity. That disk development, which was referred to as an upturned disk, 
was partial only because sufficient distance had not been achieved from the gaseous sky area. Photographs that were taken in 1946 with V2 rockets at an altitude of around 65 miles showed a deceptive disc-like and isolated sky area over White Sands, New Mexico and adjacent territory. These rocket camera photographs at greater altitudes hold most sensational confirmation of physical continuity. The stars and planets are connected luminous celestial sky areas with underlying land. The Earth cannot be circumnavigated north and south. A few around the world flights have contributed to popular misconception that the Earth has been circumnavigated north and south. All progressive movement beyond the pole points leads beyond the assumed end of the globe Earth and that land beyond constitutes a land connection with the celestial. The connecting land appearing up or out from terrestrial points other than the poles is attainable by movement straight ahead from the imaginary pole points. This is not 1927. The existence of worlds beyond the poles have been confirmed by US naval exploration during the 30 years since then. According to this book, this is an illustration of the universe. Understand that this is not a shape of the real universe, but it illustrates how we see the universe. The way our eyes work creates this illusion. Here is another illustration. We live on the bottom, on the terrestrial land surface, and above us is a layer of air and oxygen. Above that we have curved parts that represent the sky areas, which are luminous when viewed from above. Above that we have the stratosphere. And above that we have the celestial level that is the same as the terrestrial. As above, so below. Since up is always relative, our celestial cousins look up or out through their inner blue sky as we do through ours and behold the same nightly star pattern that we witness. Contrary to popular misconception based on the illusory shooting up or out from any location of the terrestrial or celestial would take the explorer away from the universe structure and project him into infinite space. Place your thumb on the illustration stratosphere section, then draw it towards you. That will describe where the space explorer would go. If he did not land back on some land area of the terrestrial, he would be completely lost in space wherein the universe was constructed. Or he would be projected upon some terrestrial area, remote from the point of flight origin. Any spaceship launched, and there is no doubt that it could be launched, would either be lost in space infinite or be returned to some area of the Earth. The universe is so ordered that power increase to overcome the arc of flight would precipitate the spaceship away from the universe. On the other hand, insufficient power would restrict the spaceship to the movement of all projectiles, and it would have to conform to the arc of flight which would return it to some land area of the terrestrial. Up is always relative to the position we hold anywhere in the universe structure. When we stand on the land up there, this terrestrial land we have left behind will have to appear to be up to our observation from a celestial area. Sitting in the nose of a rocket that is at an altitude of 500 miles from Earth's surface will have lost sight of where it entered the dark stratosphere. Then, wherever we look, we will observe the luminous points astronomically designated. As we look at the sky area covering the land surface we departed from, there will be seen the same luminous points that envelop us from every angle of observation. Then, as altitude is increased, the lights of the celestial will bear no areas. And as the universal skylight will not be arranged in a greater relation of up, the lights of the terrestrial sky direct course over and under our rocket, but will appear at every angle. Up is in fact everywhere. The so-called heavens above are everywhere. The factor of ice covering for polar areas results from the positions of such areas in relation to the universe whole. 
and from the distribution of magnetic forces throughout the universe. The magnetic dispensation varies in accordance with the natural laws governing its universal distribution. The scripting material dealing with Antarctica mentions that penguins and whales abound in this previously assumed desolate area of ice and eternal darkness, and that the mountains hold a fortune in coal and ores. As land, mountains, minerals and animal life are found to constitute the Antarctic area this side of the South Pole, land, vegetation and life are to be found as progress is made beyond the pole. At that particular pole point and for a distance beyond are experienced the most intense winds and blizzards, which act as a barrier to progress beyond the earth. Such conditions seem to be an expression of divine will which demands that terrestrial man be receptive to cosmic values before he is permitted to penetrate the ice barrier. Beyond the barrier will be found a warmer climate with land and waterways. And it is there that celestial cousins await terrestrial man's arrival. And if one asks how far beyond, it will suffice to record that the distance is negligible with modern transportation speed. The universe is not constructed in the manner of an enormous pinwheel, nor is any area thereof globular or spherical in reality, nor is any area isolated from its neighboring area. Areas of the flywheel universe as shown in this illustration could readily be drawn to the cylindrical. Then every connected land area of the celestial and the terrestrial could be undulating through the power of every area's magnetic energy. The undulating would be toward and away from the sun, and the sun would be moving in its unchanging course along the entire universe structure. The sun's continuous movement along the universe course would at one season of our terrestrial year be toward the terrestrial area, at another period of the year it would be moving away from the terrestrial areas. There is land under all celestial and terrestrial skylight. There are no globular bodies in motion. Ever-active sky gases are responsible for all detected motion which the lens detects. They also influence the spectrum. Duality of gas motion can exist, but duality of bodies can never exist. This was embraced as early as 1927. It was disclosed that every sky area of Earth would, through the motion of gaseous content, deceptively appear to be circling or revolving. What if this book is reality? What if it's true? Can you imagine what would happen if the people find out about this? I don't know if it's true or not, but for me it was a very interesting book to read. I made this video so that you know what the book is about, and I hope so more people will read it and maybe make a video about it. Anyway, big thanks to watch it. Before I go, one more thing I want to say. I started a new website called fefriends.com, which stands for Flat Earth Friends. It's a website where you can meet other flat earthers. I made it so that people can find each other and share information, maybe make new friends. That's what it's all about. If you're interested, check it out. If not, thanks for watching the video and bye bye. Admiral, a, an expedition to which I believe you're the advisor is now en route. Uh, what is that expedition doing? Well, that's the icebreaker Atka. And it's a reconnaissance expedition is going down to the South Pole area to make certain observations and to, to look for some bases. They will be back in April and they will report back and upon the information we get from that undertaking uh, we will base the bigger expedition that's to follow. Uh, is that very definitely planned or uh, is that... Uh, that is being planned right now. So I'm willing to say to you that uh, there will be a uh, number of expeditions that will follow, I think, uh, year after year, at the bottom of the world, because the government has really become interested.